Thank you. All right, crowd filling up. Loving this this audience. A lot of familiar faces already. Calvin, I see you. Matt, uh, Chantel, it's it's awesome to see everybody. This is fantastic. Sumaya, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, always happy to uh, be in the same room as you, Andrew. Hey, likewise. Likewise, uh, and loving how we have some distinguished guests as well, uh, Mayank and Shopa. Uh, Mayank, how are you? Uh, it's it's a few days after your birthday. Uh, happy belated. Welcome. Wow, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Super excited. Always great to be in this in this room. So much energy and so much excitement. Hi, Samaya. Hello, hello. Up. We share the same uh, birthday month. Mine was September 2nd, so. Mm, happy belated <laughs> birthday. All right. Well, happy count me in the club as well. September 9th. Wow. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I dig it. This is fantastic. Andrew, Unfortunately, I didn't make the cut. I, I, was I gonna missed say. out <laughs> by, by three days. Uh, I'm August 28th. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. I think if I believed in horoscope, I would say there is a, there is like a pattern here. <laughs> I was going to say that we should collect some data to see if there is a certain correlation between birthday month and uh, career choice. Oh, or, <laughs> you or it could be awesomeness. Yeah. Uh, birthday month and awesomeness. But nice. I'll anyway. take that. Yeah. Well, awesome. Hey, um, well, we'll go through a similar welcome uh, back into the weekend product, um, the product manifesto. This topic will be how do I prioritize? And we're out here with each other to build this up as a community, because uh, that's what we're here for, for each other and, and to uh, also give back. So um, the, the folks that you see on stage, we're a part of the working group on the product manifesto, and we gladly and warmly invite the community to um, really just co-create, co collaborate together, and, and get this thing out there to help many, many others beyond ourselves. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to kick it over to, to you, Mayank, if you want to do your, your intros and uh, Shopa, of course, and, and we'll take it from there. Awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone. Once again, I'm Mayank. Uh, I work at Facebook as a product manager, uh, part of the working group with Product Manifesto. Just quick TLDR Product Manifesto. What is this? Uh, uh, when we all came together, we were wondering, is there a playbook for PMs to get better at our jobs, to get better as PMs, to get better? How do we grow in an organization? How do we create a team or an organization when, if we are leading towards uh, becoming head of products? So we said we have learnings from all sides. Why don't we bring it together into one playbook that PMs can use, we can use for our challenges to get to the next level, to take the product to the next level. So we started with 10 key questions that PMs face as a challenge in their career or in the journey to build products. Today is about how do I prioritize uh, the fourth question of our five or six series uh, discussion. So very, very excited to talk about that with you all. Uh, I'll pass it over to Shilpa and then we'll get started with uh, the discussion later. Shilpa, go for it, please. Hello, everyone. My name is Shilpa Veer, currently working as a product lead. Shilpa, we can't hear you. Yeah. Oh. You're talking. You're, you're on lead. Yeah. All right. Yes. There you go. Uh, hello, everyone. Very nice to be here with all my uh, friends. And uh, I'm currently working as a product leader in Google, but I've been in the industry for a while and have been an engineer in the past and been an entrepreneur in the past. And outside of my nine to five, I really like teaching product management, which is why I've been associated with product school for a while. And as, as, as somebody who had to jump into the deep end and figure out product management, uh, prioritization is very close to my heart because that's where I made a ton of mistakes. And somebody who likes to do multiple things, uh, it's not just something that's relevant to product management. I think it's relevant to life also is learn learn prioritization. So I'm excited to talk about product manifesto and prioritization today with all of you. Awesome. Love it. Uh, well, Shilpa, it, you're no stranger to the weekend product, absolutely to, to product school and the manifesto. So, so glad that you're here on stage. Uh, Sumeya, who uh, I like to say needs no introduction, but we do it anyway for fun. Uh, Sumeya, 
Um, yeah. Why don't you take it away? Thanks, Andrew, and then I'll turn it over to you. Welcome, everyone. I'm Sumeya Bingana. I'm, I'm a products management leader currently at VMware. Uh, I've been building products for some time. Um, this topic of prioritization is also near and dear to my heart. I think uh, within it is this uh, whole concept of decision making and how you arrive to decisions. Although there is a, a little bit of a chicken and the egg um, uh, <laughs> Part of, as part of this conversation. So I'm excited for us to dig in and, and talk about this a little more and talk about tactics and frameworks and, and all the good stuff that can be helpful to all of us. Over to you, Andrew. Awesome, and I'm excited uh, about it. I'm glad that these are uh, passionate subjects for, for both you, Sumaya and, and Shilpa. Um, now similar right, for me, I think that goes with all product people. Prioritization is uh, just core to what we do. Um, so I'm Andrew. I, I had a product over at Bark, um, had a few, a couple rounds over at Zappos slash Amazon, uh, Capital One, AOL. Um, hyper focused on consumer uh, facing products, but really uh, my passion is just watching and being a part of somebody else's growth. And, and that's why I'm here too for the product manifesto and why I'm here with the week and product as um, an honored uh, co founder uh, and, and host alongside Sumia. Uh, um, all right, Mayank, your show. Oh, he's saying do a thing. All right, all right, Andrew, thank you. Thank you so much. I think uh, prioritization, I think we always think from a product perspective. But I think as a new parent, it's also in our life uh, with the baby, with work, with cooking, with cleaning. Come on, man. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's everywhere, right? It's a part of us now. Yeah. Uh, so I'll start with the first question, which always comes to our mind. Like when someone talks to you about how, how to answer this question about how do I prioritize? I think before that, we should, the question we should be asking is, why is prioritization so important? And knowing that will help us figure out how to do it better, right? The, the why of everything is super important as PMs. So Andrew, I'll start with you. Like, um, what do you think? Why is prioritization so important? Well, uh, Mayank, first, first off, nice touch. Always start with why. Uh, so fantastic question. Well, why is prioritization important? Well, so many reasons. A, a few things that come off the top of my head. It, it's how effective that you can be, how, how you can put things together in a way that um, evolves into the grand vision that you might have. And you want to heighten the chances of success. Uh, you might have this long-term vision that you're working up towards. Being able to prioritize effectively will help you get there at a higher probability. Um, it can be make or break depending on what kind of life stage or what kind of company that you're a part of. So for some instances, it's uh, uh, I would even say it's do or die to prioritize effectively. Um, uh, other uh, so, Some thoughts around it, um, whether you're in that situation or uh, another situation that's maybe well-funded and has a long run rate. Uh, even then, think about how uh, you can prioritize effectively where um, your company, your organization, your, your team specifically is well positioned to, to deliver your piece of um, your, your piece of the product strategy that leads up into the overall mission and vision of the company. And when you do that, uh, you just heighten your chance of success in delivering uh, value uh, to customers, whether it's consumer facing or B2B. Um, ultimately, that's a core fundamental a way of being successful. Uh, so that's fairly high level, but um, that's where I'd like to start the conversation. That, that's the why behind it for me, increasing Fantastic. your chances of success. Fantastic. Let me extract a few words from it and then I'll pass it on to Sumaya for some thoughts and then Shilpa. And I, again, uh, as always, please, uh, people, raise your hands and love to hear from you as well. Why is prioritization important? Uh, some extraction from that, like from the from uh, Andrew's thoughts. I heard value. Uh, we have to focus on value. I heard we have limited resources. We have to focus on resources and value. And there's another angle of time, which is again, falls into resources to, to show value. Uh, again, at the end, we'll summarize it, but these are three words that came out very strongly. Show value, you have limited resources, and again, value slash impact and move forward in, in the shortest time. So my thoughts on why is prioritization important from your perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think there are circumstances. I worked, for example, in one startup uh, where prioritization uh, 
became important for our survival. Um, and so, yes, underlying all of that is the 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 the, the, the general concept of constraints ar around specific resources such as time and uh, budget and all of that. Uh, but in this specific case, uh, because the market dynamics uh, required that we focus and only focus on one thing that would, you know, on the survival concept, uh, we had the highly competitive landscape uh, at the time. So, um, and I, I say this and I'm also thinking through... Uh, the, the general context, because I like to take this into frameworks. So if we were to start with the core framework of there are constraints around resources, and there are three types, you know, when you're thinking about the, uh, the, the levers you can pull on, uh, people, time, and scope. Um, so if you have those three, then it, one other layer on top of them are external um constraints or um, forces, and, and uh, there I'm thinking about porters, <laughs> five uh, forces, everything from, you know, your competitors to uh, the market, to, you know, the regulators, um, and, and all of those, any of those uh, elements from the five forces can uh, impact, um, you know, that core constraint that you have. So I might have overcomplicated it, but I think the, the nuance at the end of the day and the decisions you have to make for your product are driven by one of those five for, forces ultimately. So man, I think your, I think the, the biggest word I heard from you is survival. And the best prioritization happens when you are in this survival mode. And uh, the at that moment, implicitly uh, and some subconsciously you pick up the things that matters the most and will show the most high i mean the highest impact and the least amount of resources consumed um and in general cases like as you work for large companies and obviously same for me like when i work for a startup and then uber ebay etc et the level of uh, urgency uh, to prioritize was much different compared to what it would be in a startup and what we had there. And of course, the efficiency was much higher in a startup. So I think the word survival, I really resonated with that a, a lot. Uh, Shilpa, I'll, I'll come to you now. Like, What's what's your perspective on prioritization? And then I'll just uh, talk about mistakes, uh, Andrew and, and everyone else. Like, We'll come to mistakes after that, so please keep thinking. Uh, Shilpa, Prioritization is important. So, Why? What's your since you're extracting words from everyone's uh, speech, let again, me so give far. you the... Sorry, you're unmuted oh. again. Could you please? Yeah, awesome. All right. Awesome. So since you are uh, extracting words from what everybody's saying, <laughs> let me start with the words by telling you that survival is there definitely one. The second is impact and the third is time to value. And let me explain to you by giving you a couple analogies because I really like giving analogies. So if you were a doctor in the ER and if a patient came to you after an ex, uh, after let's say a road crash and they're bleeding, their bone is broken, they have a sprain and they have a black eye. If you don't prioritize and you start treating every single thing at the same time, you might not stop the bleeding in time because you are spread thin and the patient dies. Then breaking the bone or, or putting a cast doesn't really matter. And so keeping in mind the survival as well as the impact of the work you're doing, you have to prioritize and say, what is the most important thing that needs my full attention. You want to put more fuel on less fires. And with that idea, you're gonna say, in order to save this person, do I really have to put the cast or do I first have to stop the bleeding? And the answer would be stop the bleeding and that's where you're gonna focus. And after that, you're gonna say, okay, now that that is under control to a certain extent, not necessarily fixed, but under control, now I can worry about the second problem. And then the third problem. So anytime a company is going through uh, some, some short-term tactical emergencies, that prioritization is especially important for survival as well as impact. Now coming to time to value, let's say I have four non-urgent things, but I'm working on four things. Let's say I'm trying to put together Tesla and I'm working on model for the lack of better word model, S, model T, model V, model G, all of those models at the same time. 
And I say, I think I can first get the tires done for all the cars. Then I can get the windshield done for all the cars. And that's okay. At the end, you will have four cars, but you know, it will take you four times as much to get those four cars out of the market. If you instead say, let me just take one model. Let me put together the basic concept, send it out and collect feedback. So I can then in the meantime, work on the second car and learn whatever needs to be done in the first car and iterate on it. Now you have released something out in the market. You are getting valuable feedback. So again, going back uh, and just saying, can I get one thing done and out? It helps you with the context switching. It helps you stay in the zone and deliver things faster, get early feedback. And for that reason, uh, for time to value as well as to get early feedback, I think prioritization is very, very important. Great, great thoughts there. I think you tied it all together quite well. Uh, I think when when I joined product management, I, I mean, to be honest, how hard is prioritization? It's pretty straightforward. It's logic. I mean, what we're talking about, I'm sure everyone here in the room understands, yes, it's about resources. It's about the impact you have to create. So what's the big deal about it? Like, I think... And that was my same attitude towards that. Like, what's the big deal about it? You look, look at the investments and figure out the cost. And okay, do the ones with least cost and highest impact and move on. Um, so I'll push hard and say, like, uh, what do we think are the challenges when you think about prioritization where, based on our, all of us here in the room as well, on our experiences? Uh, what are the key challenges that we have seen that come that we come across when we think about prioritization? Um, I haven't seen any hand raised yet. Folks, come on. Uh, we'll start with uh, Sumaya. Why don't you start this time? Uh, what do you think are the key challenges for prioritization when you have, you know, when you go towards, towards that journey of prioritization about any product of which you work on? of challenges or at least the, the context I've worked with within. Um, so when a, as a product manager uh, or an IC, um, I loved getting, uh, you know, business priorities from leadership. They allowed me to, at a high level for the product, to design uh, and make decisions around priorities that were grounded in outcomes that are important in the business. Um, and, and that part was easy. The, the hard part there was in determining what data uh, do I look at and how much data do I need to look at uh, to help me tie outcomes to bets or to uh, features or to products, etc. So I think at that level, at least on the uh, at the IC side, uh, on the IC side, the challenge w was really tying data um, or uh, to outcomes. Uh, on the uh, on the leadership level, when I'm looking at portfolio prioritization, uh, the challenge there is understanding our capabilities as an organization in the short term aligning them with outcomes uh, and being realistic about that. So, for example, if uh, we have uh, outcomes that we know we want to, as, as a rule, we want to grow revenue every year by 20% in existing or mature products, but by 200% in brand new products. So if, if that's a general principle we're going to work with, then the next uh, set of decisions for me are around what does that mean for my whole business unit or for my organization? Um, and I need to prioritize those outcomes. So not only am I prioritizing a roadmap or a set of features, but also I'm prioritizing outcomes for my team. I, I find that to be very challenging in itself because there are a lot of external factors um, and other really complex systems within the organization that impact that. Um, and then, and I can add more, but I'll stop there. <laughs> I love that. I think, I think two, two things stand out and, and we have Murli in the room as well. Murli, we'll get you in a bit. Uh, what data to look at? So you, we have to prioritize. So what data we should look at to figure out that, you know, tiebreaker or figure out the priorities of different uh, 
ideas, future investments. And the second is, it's a good one, actually. I didn't think of from that perspective. It's translating the organizational priorities into your team's priorities, a different lens to prioritization. Okay, I love it. We'll go deeper into the data part in a bit and then come back to translation also. I think that's a very important angle with which Andrew will get your thoughts on that. Murli, I'd love to open it to you and get your thoughts. Um, uh, what problems, challenges we you have seen in prioritization? And the funny part, Murli, is we have worked together, I think, in similar companies, all marketplaces. I saw your profile. So welcome to the room and, and love to hear your thoughts. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Mayang. This is a very interesting topic. Uh, and yeah, I, I see that you, uh, yeah, you've, uh, you may have overlapped at Uber, I guess. Uh, anyway, nice, nice to be here. Uh, uh, one thing I want to just uh, kind of point out is uh, when you, uh, prioritization also, uh, the re, one of the challenges with prioritization is there isn't like one clear answer sometimes. And, and I'll give you an example. If you're thinking about like a zero to one product, and let's say you're building out a marketplace, for example, uh, whether you prioritize getting supply first or you prioritize getting demand first can have two very different go-to-market strategies and ultimately two different products. And so depending on where you are in the product life cycle, um, and how mature the product is, what I have found is uh, your entire go-to-market and your product can be influenced by what you prioritize first, and it's always it's not always a clear-cut answer. Got it. I, I like that. I'm also going to list it and park it and come back because I'm making a list of challenges so we can then discuss solutions that can have sort of common patterns that can apply to elsewhere so that the extraction would be... Uh, Prioritization frameworks could be different by stages. Uh, so it might change. Absolutely fair. Um, we'll come back to it again to figure out, like, I think we can do deep dive on that. Can it be normalized? Can it be more deterministic? Can it be more universal? Can we go a level higher and say, no, it cannot be different by stages. There is a level we can think that could be same for all, and then it can have its own nuances. So we should definitely, I love that. I love the challenge there. Different by stages. So again, three points now, adding to Sumaya's first two. Uh, Andrew, going over to you, uh, challenges uh, that you have experienced uh, in prioritization as a PM. And she'll buy your next, so we'll <laughs> keep thinking. Thanks. Uh, what resonates with me is just emphasizing further on the lenses. Um, it depends on where, how do you distill it, um, where you sit within the organization. So that's where some complexity can arise. Um, where you have multiple lenses to go through. You got one, the company mission and vision, of course, that's the standard that everyone operates under, but your organization might have one too, which is a distillation of that. And then your team might have a, uh, their own distillation on what that might look like. Uh, imagine if you had to collaborate with other uh, team members within the same organization, and then think about the challenges to go outside of your organization and just hope and hopefully, if um, the organization is structured well, then the outcomes are, to Sumeya's point, the business outcomes are at least aligned. So at least teams can collaborate a lot easier without saying, hey, uh, sorry, I'm on the hook for this. What, whatever you're trying to collaborate on, we're going to have to park it because I can't help you. That doesn't help me. Um, so the distillation of many, many lenses, company mission, vision, down to organization mission, vision, down to your team mission, vision, and the teams that you have to collaborate with. How do you make it all align? So you guys, um, you, know, you can, uh, what, what, what's the adage? Um, move quicker alone, but go further together. Um, how can you go further together, which is exceptionally important to product strategy and heightens your chance of success. Uh, so that's where I see um, you know, going further and further into my product career, particularly as you bridge in uh, to say product manager, senior to lead. Uh, when you're at the lead level, you tend to uh, cross collaborate beyond your own organization more often. And that's a common problem, a, co a common complication that I see within our market and within our field um, that I think organizations are getting better about, but many are still not quite there yet to build that organizational alignment to help everybody prioritize better and uh, to help them ultimately align and, and achieve the things that, that the company ultimately wants to prioritize. Um, okay, um, other piece that I, I can't help but show, but you had a good Tesla uh, analogy. And what I love about the Tesla analogy is if, uh, and how public they are with their master plan, if you look at it, they called out what to prioritize and who to prioritize for. You know, their mission, uh, accelerate, 
uh, the world's transition to sustainable energy, um, and that they happen to build some of the m- most amazing cars out there is very methodical. Let's start with the highest margin luxury vehicle, use those um, profits to move it into the next tier, which is upper level sedan, and use that to do something mass market with the three. Uh, to your point, if they did, if they started with the three, they would have been gone. They, they were all, almost cash depleted on the S um, Elon admitted that. So it's just like how this all comes together. And what I love about them is that uh, uh, outside looking in, I can't confirm for sure. I don't know if we have anybody from Tesla within our network here or in the audience to confirm, but I feel like they did a great job that that master plan being out in public. Uh, I imagine that rallied the entire company to look at priorities in a very similar way where that's not always true or in, in many cases, just not true for many, many organizations. Uh, so that's a, a complication to look out for. I think that's a good cue for me to plug in. Guys, this is exactly what we did with Product Manifesto. We put it out there on the website. This is our roadmap. This is our priority. This is why it's doing. So if you want to learn more about Product Manifesto, go to productmanifesto.com. It has our timeline, our draft of first version, and love to hear from you with the feedback. All right, coming back to Andrew's point. I think it's a very important point. I completely resonate with that. He, he put it in a very nice and humble way about organizations should do a good job in creating a culture and a framework for alignment of, uh, I think the let's call it the objective function of, of whatever goals you have and what you have to work towards. The biggest challenge I have seen in my career is actually that, which is primarily we are prioritizing for X. Let's take uh, Murali's example. We are prioritizing for, uh, let's say, supply growth. So in case of, uh, let's say, Uber example would be driver growth, uh, fair. Whereas the organization, because we are a growth team, that was our DNA. Like traditionally, that's what we do. I mean, this is not my team, by the way. I'm just picking up an example here. But uh, at the organizational level, the goal was let's focus on uh, driver retention. Now, yes, you might be aligned a little bit. You're focusing on getting more drivers on the platform, but the focus was retention. And because of the misalignment on the on the goals here or the objective function, whatever you prioritize will not be aligned. As PMs, it's really, really important how well you ladder up to and respond towards the Uber goal of the team, the organization, the company, or the CEO, so on and so forth. So I love it. Misalignment or in goals uh, is the problem. And of course, the solution is what you spoke about, Andrew, you know, a shared framework across uh, different people, et cetera. Shilpa, coming to you. More problems. We have nice ones here. Good list here. So I'm going to repeat a little bit of what's said and then try to add a couple more in there. So lack of clarity on where the company is going uh, and, and your misalignment, it actually manifests in two different ways. One is you don't know what work to prioritize on your end because you don't know where the company is going. That's one part of it. And the second part of it is you might actually have a great project, but you can't get funding because you cannot justify uh, because people don't understand how it ladders up to the company executives goals. And so I think it's a two way problem or there is a two part problem when it comes to misalignment there. Uh, You can't pick up the right pieces of work or if you have picked up the right pieces, you can't sell them in prioritization. So that's one. Uh, The second one is in my opinion, competing KPIs. To give you an example, I was working in a team where we had revenue and active number of active users as KPIs. And they both were our North Stars. And on surface, you might say, yeah, it makes sense. But there were times where uh, we had two different segments. There is upper mass market and there's a lower mass market. Lower mass market, lower spending power, but high numbers. Upper mass market, higher spending power, lower numbers. And when come the design decisions, somebody would say, hey, we want to go after upper mass market because we have revenue. And somebody would say, but we also have net actors. We want to design for elements. And this happened far too many times. And having a clear stack ranking of the KPIs would have helped in prioritizing the right projects. And so, Uh, And it's not just one place. I've seen in other places also where everything is a priority. Everything cannot be a priority at the same level. There has to be sub-stack ranking even within the KPIs. So so that is one other thing that I would like to add. 
Number three thing, in my opinion, is lack of true understanding of cost and impact. And yes, to some extent, it's because the data might not be available, but also sometimes we think the cost is just engineering weeks. That is not always the cost. There is a lot of other costs that are involved. I, I want to do something that uh, leverages human ra uh, ranking. I have to set up a team of 80 people in, in Poland who can do all that manual work, for example. That's a true cost there. So a lot of times we look at the surface and we say, this is a low cost idea in terms of engineering. But what we really need to be doing is understanding the true cost of not building the feature, but successfully launching it and having it produce results. And that might include, include um, human judges, that might include customer service, that might include uh, something else. And so that's something that we have to factor in. And so it's the impact. Impact, there might be some impact on uh, revenue, but then sometimes dealing with tech debt is a priority because the system is bursting at the seams. So it helps to know what is the relative weightage of certain types of impacts and costs. And sometimes the place, uh, the plain rice will not suffice and you might have to go for a weighted scorecard in order to justify that. So that's one thing that I would say. And last thing that I wanna talk about is there is this always the struggle of how do you prioritize horizon two or horizon three ideas when horizon one is taking up all of your efforts? To be fair, horizon one is here it's producing results. It's hard to justify investing in Horizon 2. So that short-term versus long-term investment is an important thing that prevents a lot of PMs from bringing new thinking, new ideas, bigger projects uh, to fruition. Wow, that, the last line was, I'm sure, coming from Google. <laughs> Go think big versus only focusing on no, the that's current. me. Big oh, from man. Google. <laughs> You have really, uh, you know, you the culture is imbibed there. Uh, amazing. I think we have a good set of uh, challenges that I can I, I see coming out from a discussion. One is uh, really understanding what you are supposed to work or what you are uh, what you are supposed to work on in terms of what the goals are, uh, in terms of whether the goals of the organization or the goals of the team, etc. And mismatching those goals, whether it's by organization by design or by uh, or by you not understanding the goal through some channel, that's up to us. Second is going deep and understanding the problem, collecting the right data. To Sumaya's point, do we know how to get that data? Because sometimes you're sitting there and you have a list of ideas from the team because you do a brainstorming, then you don't know how to get the right data set. I think we should harp on that a little bit today. And, and the last, I, uh, I'm shocked nobody's talking about communication. Uh, I think the biggest challenge is communication after like, let's say address the goal part of it, but for the wider team, uh, communication is the, is, is, is key. I mean, we, we, we have to make sure um, we constantly communicate to have a shared understanding. So when we are at the table talking about prioritization, well, it's, it's very clear to know uh, for all, all of us to know what we are doing and why they're doing that. I'll start at one point here. Uh, is there a way we can make it simple to think about these things? Like why is, again, like uh, as Murli was saying, stages, uh, we have to think differently in different stages. I don't disagree. I agree. Like it's fair. Like we have to respect the problem. And that's what kind of sometimes stage to your point, horizon A, horizon B, for to Murli's point, supply demand for Uber and so on and so forth. But let's say you are the CPO or CEO and you think about prioritization. What's the most simplistic one line thinking in your mind when you're sitting at the table and, and thinking about, well, um, this is how I should be, uh, this is the question I should be asking the team to get the real answer on prioritization. Like, is there something as simple as that that we can give our listeners today to just go and use that tomorrow as an action? Yeah, go for it, Shilpa. I see, uh, by the way, I, we also have a video chat going on, folks, so I can see people raising hands in the working group, except so my hours and audio only. So, Shilpa, I'll let you also raise hands and like, just uh, go for it. What is that one line? I, again, one line. It cannot be five lines. Yeah, go for it. Right. Um, so, one simple principle that I follow, not just for future prioritization, but for any kind of prioritization in life, and that is what I tell everyone, yeah. is Eisenhower matrix, which is figure out urgency and importance of something. And if it's yeah. urgent and important, do it now. If it's urgent, but not important, do what's needed right now, bare minimum, but figure out the right implementation later. 
Mm. If it's important, make time for it. Mm. But it doesn't have to be today. And if it's not urgent and not important, please do not do it. Urgent and important. Okay, if you're sitting in a meeting and people show you something, a slide with all the priorities, which one is urgent? I'm just repeating, like just to make sure it's a, like something that's actionable. What's urgent and important? And based on that question, you will figure out, ah, is the right thing. Okay, I, I buy that. Not, not, I think that's a pretty good idea. I like it. Um, anyone else want to chime in? Folks, like, please share your thoughts. It doesn't have to be one line for, for Shilpa. You can just even have a paragraph for yourself. Morley, go for it. Yeah, sure. Um, I think one thing that might help is just to think about if you literally just had resources to do exactly one thing, what would yeah. that be? Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. different ways of asking that question. One yeah. could be something like, you only have one week to do it, what will you do? Or you only have one engineer to do it, what will you do? Um, you think about what is, if you could only do one thing, what would that be? Well, I love that. I think there have been so many instances I have been asked this question when I have 10 things on the slide or, or a document. And the, the motive behind that is, have you done your prioritization right? Like, I think that's a very good question. If you have one thing to pick, what that would be. And that pushes all of us to rethink our prioritization, rethink our investments, and then pick one over the other. So yeah, so I'll, I'll paraphrase that in my language. I think, uh, where is the biggest impact? Uh, and the same language, but more use the same thing in different ways. Where's the biggest impact? And then we are pushed to start saying that one thing which we don't, which is no, no, and no. I think, so one was, let's take away that one thing, uh, which one you like, Shilpa's version, Morley's version, our version, uh, biggest impact or urgency and uh, highest impact. Another is figure out where you can say no. I think tendency of early PMs, when I was early, like in my earlier career, the tendency was, this is so cool. I should do everything. That's the paralysis. That's the challenge of prioritization. You're so in love with the product. You're, and that point about, um, oh, only two engineering days. We can we should just get it done. Let's, just, let's stick it in and it'll be amazing. It's not amazing if you do 10 things, <laughs> to be honest. Like It's always two plus two days. It's never two days or two weeks or whatever it is. So I think um, next list. Saying no is super important. What is it one thing you should do? What is the 10 thing you can say no to is another one? Okay, I haven't gone round table. Andrew, Sumaya, if you want to chime in to share some one-liners if you want to on how you think about meetings or you know, approach of prioritization. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think uh, that my one-liner is the sweet spot of viability and impact. So yes, definitely impact is always number one. But then I'm also realistic about um, the capabilities, again, of the organization. And I'm thinking about companies of all sizes. When you're a startup or you're a large company, you still have that constraint of, of your organization, your your vision, what uh, you want to do. Um, and so I, I like to think of that, uh, you know, upper right hand quadrant, that's the that's the the place where your your highest viability and your highest impact meet together, um, and that's what you prioritize. I think I love it. I think I love it. The first was where is the impact? Okay, I'm listening. One, two, three. Just say I'm, I'm just simulating a situation here. <laughs> and second is ah, great. Three things: high impact, love it. Can we do it? Um, and how much longer? So again, just uh, again, we'll land with frameworks at the end, guys. Like we will get there. I know like we are discussing a lot, but we'll definitely get to frameworks, but we're teasing into it. So yes, I love it. Impact, can we do it? Andrew, coming to you, one-liners from your side. All right. Uh, one-liner for me would be debate and prioritize your principles. Hmm. Um, the context behind that is if, if you can have a really good debate backed with quantitative qualitative data to suggest one principle comes before the other that can be highly impactful especially when it's written especially when it's publicized communicated uh, to your point mayok very well so um he here's a loose example um high touch over price elasticity price elasticity over um uh, price economics so it gives you a cascade of things where we're not saying one or um, uh, we don't care about one thing. We're saying that we care about one thing over the other. If we had mm. to make hard, hard choices, 
Uh, so that's going to come in handy uh, to help you prioritize the right thing to do. That's going to uh, hopefully go back towards your hypothesis on what's going to make your yourself successful, help validate that further. Hopefully it's already validated and you're just uh, making sure that you're placing your BECs a, a effectively for the things that are important, um, that to the things that are customer centric, that, that solves customer problems in the most effective way for the business. So I, I like it when you can have a healthy debate at any given point in time and sometimes even see the order shuffle because depending on how things worked out for you uh, with, with what you shipped and what you learned, this should be a constant conversation that's out there and has a written stance that's, also, that's just shared by any channel, any medium within the company, Slack, uh, Confluence, whatever your wiki of choice is, email, whatever it might be. When this occurs, when this happens, it can be really impactful and really powerful. Um, and what I love is when this occurs and somebody says, oh gosh, you know, I thought those two things were super important. I never really thought about it that way. I can see why, um, you know, revenue takes a back seat here to gross margin. I get that now. So like, I, I love it when it brings that kind of sense of clarity and how it lines back up into the broader strategy, because those things aren't easy. And those, those discussions, you could spend you know, hours d debating on um, what tough priority that you would stack rank over another or, or principle that you'd stack rank over another. There's multiple ways of looking at it, but uh, I love it when it cascades and it brings um, more clarity in into the why. And uh, uh, I, I also see a boost in morale um, uh, when that's done effectively. Andrew, oh I, my God, I love that. Go ahead, Sumaya. I, I, just, I just wanted to highlight a point that Andrew makes here um, around that tension that happens with, uh, with prioritization. Uh, as some, I, I've, I've worked in so many different organizations and I can, when I look back at the least healthy ones in every way, you know, did not perform really well, etc. cetera. Um, I, when I think back about the prioritization conversations at a senior level or at the, you know, at the lowest levels, they were not marked by any tension. There were not robust conversations. People were making decisions in silos. There wasn't transparency. Uh, and so when we talk about prioritization, I think there are other elements around the, the this concept. When we're talking about communication and alignment of the team and who participates in the activity, I think those are all elements that are so important. So uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I think these are... We'll, we'll, let's go deeper. I love this topic. Uh, the, the part about uh, setting the principles of prioritization and, and to Sumaya's point, also communicating and getting the stakeholders involved. Uh, I think most conversations where I have been and we're discussing uh, prioritization, let's say you have three features. Uh, you have data to support that all three are impactful in some order. Uh, but the impact is in different metrics. So uh, one could be to and point like retention, one could be new growth, one could be just making experience better. And you can argue from a designer's perspective, they should they are focusing on the experience. The growth guy or is talking about let's go launch the growth feature. And the engineer says, well, I'll do the one that I believe is the coolest one because the impact is all high for all. Uh, then then it comes back to one point. It's not about debating with them, it's about what was the principle of, of prioritization? Where did we start? So having that documented and our job as product leaders, product managers is really making sure that foundation is so strong and that principle is very clearly outlined earlier, which I would say 90% of the time never happens. It's very easy to say and it's hard to do when you are in the execution mode of just go keep figuring out the roadmap. Uh, but laying the principle or even questioning guys, thank you so much. But what was the principle of prioritization? Let's go back to it and writing it back to the whiteboard. I mean, sorry, whiteboard is no more thing, real thing, but wherever you write it down online on a conflict document or what Andrew said, really puts things into perspective and people are grounded to that one anchor that we are driving towards. So that brings us to an interesting topic. Let's now move towards how do you do your prioritization? So we'll start with uh, an example so people can chime in and share their thoughts. So otherwise it, it should be actionable for us. So uh, an example would be um, you are, 
we are a team. Uh, we are all product managers. We are working together. And the situation is um, we, are, we have been asked to come up with a roadmap to find the top, uh, to increase our um, our retention for, let's say an example of Instacart, a retention of our Instacart prime users, which is basically express users who subscribe by 20%. And you have to come up with ideas and you already have a list of 20 ideas that the team came up with. So you have a list of 20 ideas for an objective that is retention. Uh, how would you go about the prioritization? Just to, anyone can take an example and we can build on top of that. The idea is just to do the whole process together because we have already talked about multiple parts of prioritization. Uh, it would be good to share a real example to be with people and get their feedback also. And do you want to mind starting with where do you start? I have someone waiting. Uh, Adarsh, I'll add you and you'll join right after Andrew. Andrew, go for it. Great. All right. Awesome. So um, I'll bucket it in, in a couple of scenarios. Excuse me. So uh, <clears throat> in some scenarios, you'll have a wide body of evidence, qualitative, quantitative data to help you furnish those 20 bets. Um, and hopefully they're at a high probability. And then you can select a framework behind it that you believe will um, bring the most impact, whatever it might be, um, just make it fit. For, for you and your team, what's uh, important uh, in those cases. Um, and what I find uh, compelling as a product person, when you know your staff well, you know, you can pick and pull from any framework that's out there that you think is going to be effective for the, for the job, but also think about how you might retrofit it into your team. So depending on, say, the level of my staff, um, where um, I want to give maybe even higher level of autonomy, I might retrofit a given framework to solve those problems and add maybe a, a passion around, uh, sorry, uh, add a, an attribute within the, the framework around, say, passion. Um, so as long as things are aligned to, to what we're trying to achieve, which should be foundational and taken care of, I feel like that is a great way to take a look at things where when the passion is there, when I feel like they have a good product mindset and the discipline is scaled out effectively, that they're going to work on the most passionate projects that also happen to drive, have a high chance of high impact. Um, you know, the alignment's looking good, the strategy's looking good, the feasibility, the viability's looking good. Those are the ones where they spend extra time in because they can't even help themselves. Like I'm going to put in the extra hour, uh, hours, the, the, the night, the weekend or whatever, because I want to see it through. And they have this ownership mentality. Um, so that's how I like to prioritize things with the team to add another layer of autonomy inside of whatever we have uh, as a product culture. Uh, the other bucket is when there is a vast amount of ambiguity. Uh, we don't know um, how we're going to get customers into uh, Prime, uh, Instacart Prime, right? And the other scenario, like we have, uh, we've been doing it for years. We know how we split our lifecycle segments. We understand how to nudge specific segments into the other that trickles into the other into prime. And in this case, we have no clue. We, we opened up this program. It's very nascent. We're still trying things out. So the 20 bets, I'd find a framework. I'd try to identify uh, and instill and, and a framework that helps us increase our learning quotient as quickly and as effectively as possible so that our guesses and our bets get better over time so that ultimately it leads into the first scenario. Um, yeah, awesome. Uh, that, that, was, that was great. I think I, I love that. So I think two points that came out and I'll, others should come to you now after that. Two games that really, two points that came out very clearly. One uh, is set the goal. Okay, this is the goal. Communicate to the team that guys, the retention is the goal for us. You're gonna go from A to B. That's point number one. Second that I really connect with was uh, around, okay, you have the 20 levers. Do we know what the impact is? And spin out a work stream to understand or measure the impact or project the impact based on previous work, or if not, do some sort of understanding to figure out the impact. Otherwise, without knowing of, uh, without the know-how of impact, we cannot figure out where should we invest it. We'll come back to it in a bit. And then others, you have thoughts. You joined just now. Go for it. Molly will come back to you in a bit. 
Yeah, uh, thanks for giving me the chance to to be to participate in this discussion. And this was a very fascinating discussion. And I do want to go back to the point about principle that Mike was mentioning before. And just for some context, I am a data scientist in WhatsApp, and I am I am very much interested in product management. And oftentimes in those organizations that we have. We have multiple teams who are working on something similar, and I do completely agree that having this principle upfront helps in the case of alignment. But I do have some questions and thoughts around when it comes to like practical nature of doing things. As one of the things that you mentioned is that oftentimes the teams are either in the growth mapping session or execution session. So, do you have certain um, thoughts about? What is the ideal time that teams should think about principles? Uh, that's one. And second, it is useful when there are multiple teams involved. And by nature, the principles are somewhat philosophical in nature. And if different teams are involved, they have different incentives. So, and especially if the principles are philosophical in nature, Sometimes you go like round and round over some points. So how do you decide like this is it? And then third, which is somewhat related, is how often or what causes you to go back and revisit that. So these are some of the things that I practically like wrangle with in in day to day process to bring alignment when there are multiple things going on. So Maya, do you want to take that? Uh, I just see you yeah, hearing. I'll take a couple. Um, so the first thing around principles, if you find that you're changing your principles often, uh, and by often, I mean more than once a quarter. So, you know, if ideally your principles are broad enough that they allow the team autonomy to make them mean whatever they need them to mean within that situation. So they need to be directive enough and have enough guardrail around them for people to have certain understanding of the spirit, but uh, not too too restrictive. So that's at least the, the first thing I think about when it comes to principles around prioritization, etc. Um, the second uh, uh, part of your question that I wanted to address um, was I didn't write it down and so it escaped. It's almost 10 uh, p.m. here. Um, can you remind me what was the last part you brought up? Yeah, uh, no worries. Uh, and I um, get your first point, which is that the principle needs to be broad enough s such that it does not warranty a frequent change in those principles. And then uh, my second point was around sometimes these principles tend to be philosophical in nature and yeah. this is most useful when we are dealing with alignment between multiple teams and yeah. by nature they have different agenda to approach this so in such cases how do we sort of move forward and then yeah. the one that i asked in relation was uh, yes principles can be broad in nature such that it does not uh, often warrant, you know, like you, so you don't want to change like every month, but in what cases that you might prompt to revisit them? Because that also I feel having that established upfront gives an additional sort of like validity towards having the principles in the first place, like if you get what yeah. I mean. Yeah, absolutely. You start seeing it because principles start getting in the way. Uh, so, so you, you know, you one week you feel like, oh, this principle is is maybe holding me back. But then the second week you say that, or the second month you say that, then that principle needs to go or needs to be re-looked at or re-examined. So I think in general that applies to any principles or frameworks or whatever the team decides to, to take on. Um, I, this is part of the reason why sometimes, in, for example, when you see a startup scaling from series A to series B or C, etc., they, they use one framework at one point and it works well when there are three people or four people but then when they're 10, they go completely different routes. It's not because what they went, what they're going with is a lot more effective. Sometimes people just need the refresh or they need the, a, a new baseline mentally that allows them to think about things a little differently. So there is a psychological aspect to this that I, I, I have a lot of uh, appreciation for. Um, but uh, just out the same product principles we have around try something, doesn't work, iterate, gets better over time. Um, the second point you brought up around uh, 
you know, conflict that comes up in prioritization between, let's say, two different product teams or even within the different products. I recently uh, was part of one where my the, the team or the product team responsible for the onboarding experience had some sort of conflict around the goals, that is, with, with another team. Um, I, generally speaking, I... I try to let the two different, uh, t- the two product teams work it out. Um, and, and some, and what happens is at least 80% of the time is that they're really looking at the same thing ultimately, but they're just using two different metrics to get there. Um, and they need to negotiate that or think through it together as a team. Sometimes, uh, this is actually where I think leadership, management leadership needs to get involved because they have that bigger view. They, they understand the whole life cycle from beginning to end and can see all the product teams, can understand where we're over-optimizing, where we're under-optimizing, uh, where we need to unblock and, and, and orchestrate and help uh, and increase the, the effectiveness of teams. Sometimes... Uh, that leadership has to get involved actually to to help deconflict that and help the team determine which one of those priorities is actually more important or because we have one set of data from one product team, hey, now this other product team also needs to pay attention to that data because ultimately the the number one priority for us is X, Y, Z. Um, so that's a long way of saying um, <laughs> there are different nuances here for how that conflict can be resolved. Yeah, that... Thanks, Leah. And, oh, so go for it. Yeah. No, you go for it. Yeah, so uh, thanks a lot for going into this. And I do realize part of my question was a bit like convoluted. So I do appreciate like, taking that question in and breaking it down. So this is what I took away from those reply. So principles by nature, it needs to be broad enough such that it does not warrant frequent changing. And second, um, it is most useful when things are happening at scale. Um, and we should not underestimate the psychological nature of it where it's all about people. So to, in order to facilitate that, it is useful to establish the conflict and escalation channels upfront in regards to the principle. So this is what I took away from this conversation. I, uh, I can just add like my layer to it. Uh, so to Sumaya's point, uh, when I use the word principle uh, in a conversation or in, in prioritization, it can be at different levels. I mean, one, yes, uh, there can be a philosophical or high level broad principle, which the team's mission is what we call it uh, for different teams. And that, to Sumaya's point, has to evolve as you evolve the business model, as you evolve the product, as your users evolve and gets even wider. First, you're focused on small scale. Now you do large scale, medium scale, whatever, and you keep evolving it. I think that I'm, I think I'm aligned with. I think that's fair. It should be broad enough and we should definitely have that. When it comes to prioritization, uh, when, I mean, when I first introduced the word principle in today's conversation, my objective was to say, we need to have an anchor to start the discussion on prioritization. What's your anchor? And that was what I was referring to as principle. That has to be very specific. Otherwise, the prioritization goes nowhere. If our goal is to improve retention, that's the goal. Everything else does not matter. And that's our principle of conversation. If there's a conversation happening, somebody is pushing about something else and you bring back home saying, guys, we started with the anchor <laughs> as uh, retention improvement. These ideas do not, uh, are, or uh, these ideas rate very low in that prioritization uh, principle or anchor, hence not our focus. So that's how we resolve conflicts. Uh, I would say I resolve conflicts. Anyway, uh, I'll let Sumaya uh, jump in. Yes. To clarify, yes. when you're so when you're talking about principle, you're talking about the outcome, the ulti- or like the the metric uh, that matters. It could be a metric. It could be uh, anchor. Could be a metric. It could be uh, as good as uh, we have to improve our customers' uh, experience for getting a ride on Uber and the team can decide what the metric is and move on. But again, like it's, it has to be something that is an anchor that teams using to prioritize. 
Yeah, makes sense. I, I, I think it also shows up as OKR sometimes, and, and yep. the team yep. can pick the ones that work. Yep, so. So, Mayan, before this conversation started, you were talking about the Instacart uh, example of for the retention, right? And 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 just the conversation that just happened around anchors and stuff. What I really want to um, share, basically, my point of view is that what you really have to prioritize is not the feature, but the problem that you're solving, or the KPI that you are optimizing for. How you solve it. There are n number of ideas and you have to be agile and say, okay, what can we do fast? What will work? What are we, what are the users responding to and be iterative in nature and try many things possibly. And of course, the better data that you have, the better you can prioritize amongst those features using any method. But the real prioritization has to happen around what goal, what problem, what KPI, and then flexible about how we get there. I think that makes sense. Uh, Andrew, uh, do you mind like taking the summary of Shilpa's final, like she summarized quite well for us, uh, what Sumaya mentioned and what we all mentioned to put it into perspective. So we have like a framework that people can leave with. And of course the detailed framework will be at productmanifesto.com. <laughs> but I'll let Andrew share the complete summary. Andrew, over to you. All right. Uh, thanks, Mayok. Uh, Mayok. Um, and thanks for sticking with us. Uh, I, I know you have some commitment. So um, really quickly, the, the summary at the high level, because we went through a lot of nuances and those will get, um, we'll do our best to fold them into the product manifesto. High level summary, um, setting goals, Mayok. Have a great, great night uh, with your family. Cheers. Um, all right. So set your goals, communicate, communicate them uh, effectively. And set, identify and set your prioritization framework around uh, impact, resourcing, et cetera. Uh, so there's tons of nuances that we went through as a community. Uh, really appreciate the conversation that we had here tonight. Um, at Harsh, uh, very thankful that you came on stage. Uh, we had Morali for a bit. Very thankful that he was on there as well. And the loving, uh, the audience and the turnout here it really does mean a lot. Uh, to all of us at the Week in Product, uh, Product Manifesto, that uh, you chose to spend uh, part of your day, part of your night, wherever it might be where you are uh, with us. Um, we're, we're all here for each other and, and for the product community at large. Uh, so that's that's the summary. Uh, public service announcements. Uh, of course, if you don't already, uh, feel free to follow Sumea, Shelpa, uh, the folks that were speaking on stage, Mayank and uh, the week in product and follow our scheduled programming. We'd love to see you again. Y'all are the best. Uh, Shilpa, uh, before we um, go to Samia for final send off, Shilpa, have any words for us? I think uh, I had a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy the rooms with you guys and I think this is an important topic. So thank you for arranging that. I think there were a lot of good discussion and if I can leave everybody with just one or two things, it would be not everything can be a priority, even when everything is important. Know exactly what is the top one thing that you really, really have to get done and be very focused on what problem you're solving, but be flexible about how you solve it. Awesome, awesome Shopa. Thank you, Sumeya. Parting words for our lovely audience. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I, I just want to put one reminder out there uh, because it, this keeps appearing and creeping up in my conversations with different PMs. Um, so if your leadership is not giving you a clear set of priorities around business outcomes that matter, then that will translate to bad priorities, most likely. You know, it's like a, a game of chance uh, on the product side. So it always starts with 
what are the business priorities for your business or for your uh, company? And then how does that tie into your product priorities? So start there and anchor a lot of your conversation, especially when you have a lot of naysayers or people trying to push you on why are you making this decision or that this other decision you're you're making sound decisions you're using the data you're doing your best you're being transparent but fundamentally you need to fall back into what really matters to the business that's one two and this is something i believe in uh strongly if there is any one thing that you as a pm own its prioritization you really own nothing else <laughs> everything else everyone else on the team owns but fundamentally like if you were to to like boil it down to one set of activities that you do that is written down and that you have to answer for i think prioritization is the thing yes you have a ton of other things to do but really a prioritization it is it uh, because there will be uh, situations you know that 10 percent here and there where you will have a lot of people disagree in the room and disagree with your prioritization and you'll they'll still have to um you know leave the room and go with what you decide so uh, and not to go a whole into the whole authoritarian regime thing <laughs> but there are situations where you're going to have to make that decision and people have to follow you there that's it Absolutely. back to you andrew awesome awesome well love it uh, shopa sumeya those were fantastic fantastic uh, words of advice uh, it reminds me a couple things um uh, just short little remembrances that help me uh focus on the things that um y'all provided the, the the wisdom that y'all provided for the the audience here so um uh, starting with you uh, shelpa it reminds me of the things that uh, i remind myself uh, and my my kids hey you can do anything you want to do but you can't do everything and that's just the nature of it you might want to dabble and that applies to all of us and our teammates as as we ideate uh, sure there's a lot of fun cool things out there but um we got we got goals to achieve that circles back uh, to Sumeya, the business outcome, um, how you line that up um, and how it goes back into maybe being uh, customer centric. I, I feel like that's a word that's thrown around way too much without a good understanding of what that is. Uh, it's like, hey, we got to be customer centric. We got to solve these problems for customers. This is what customers want. This would make their life so much more awesome and better without thinking, wait a second, should we do it though? Yeah, I don't disagree. But is that right for us? And is that right for our business? Does that tie to the things that we need to drive? Does that tie to the way that we're positioned and how it's going to help us grow as a company uh, and what we want to achieve uh, short and long term? Uh, that That is customer centricity where the business outcome cannot live without the customer problem that we're trying to solve. Those two live in harmony where I see um, missteps out there. Where it's like one or the other. It's like, hey, it's not one or the other. It's this unified view of it. And, and that's what's going to set a customer centric company apart versus um, uh, I think it, it it can be misconstrued, but it, the notion of a product centric one where you just approve the product uh, and they will come build it and they will come approach. So that that's what swirled up for me uh, with uh, the, the awesome, awesome advice, uh, the parting words that uh, Shopa and Sumeya that, that y'all had for us tonight. Um, so with that, just want to thank everybody here again uh, for, for being here. It's It's been wonderful seeing so many familiar faces. Again, Chris, uh, I see you out there. Simon, I mean, Jeff. Uh, so Hale, oh my gosh. It's so wonderful to see you all again, Chantel, um, and all the new faces in the room. Um, y'all are a wonderful bunch. I can't wait to see y'all and, and hang out and, and just collaborate and give back to the product community. Um, have a great night, y'all. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Uh, um, uh, by the way, for anyone who's in the San Francisco area, I'm going to be there um, next week or the, I guess the following week. Yeah. The mon Monday, the 27th. If anyone is there for the SAS conference, SASTER. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited nice. about that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Well, it was good to see you all. Have a wonderful night. And I look forward to seeing you again. All right.
Thank you, everyone. And hello to all the familiar faces I've uh, collaborated with in the past. I see, I see a few as well. Simon, I was excited to see you. Hi. And others. Good night. All right. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.